This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aperos first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperos. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. I hope you put up with the fact we weren't doing a live show last week. We just couldn't make it happen. While some of you would believe that increasing EV adoption will bring the electrical grid to its knees, the reality of EV ownership tied with smart grid tech is very different. Not only can smart grids help reduce grid strain and save EV drivers money, but two-way charging infrastructure can use the energy stored in EV battery packs to help ease grid strain during peak demand periods. This week, Ford, Honda and BMW announced a new joint venture designed to make this all as seamless to the end user as possible. Called Chargescape, the new company will work with the Open Vehicle Grid integration platform to help their customers and utility companies in North America to work seamlessly together to benefit from smart V2G charging and energy management services. Frankly, we're excited to hear more. The European Union has launched an official investigation into the pricing of Chinese-made EVs entering onto the European market. According to the EU president, member nations are worried that Chinese automakers are able to price their vehicles far lower than the competition thanks to state subsidies offered to them by the Chinese government. This, in turn, it argues, keeps the price of Chinese-made EVs artificially low and makes it far higher harder for European-made EVs to fairly compete. If its investigation finds these allegations to be true, the EU may move to make EVs from China subject to additional import tariffs designed to give European-made EVs price parity. While it might seem fairer, consumers could see higher prices for EVs rather than lower ones, which is what we really need. Hyundai was celebrating this week with the announcement that its Ioniq 6, a car that's already getting Ray reviews around the world, has just been awarded multiple new accolades. First, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety awarded the all-electric sedan its lauded Top Safety Pick Plus Award for its latest rounds of crash tests, praising the car for its full suite of safety features, but bringing special attention to its front crash prevention system and pedestrian and safety systems. The very same day, Ward's Auto crowned the eGMP drivetrain found in the Ionic 6, one of its 10 best engine and propulsion systems of 2023, thanks in part to the impressive efficiency the Ionic 6 manages, but also because of the spacious interior space that the eGMP platform offers thanks to its skateboard design. Stellantis-owned Peugeot unveiled its all-new E3008 Fastback SUV this week, the first all-electric model from Stellantis to be built on its brand-new Stella Medium vehicle platform. Due to go on sale from February next year, the E3008 will come with a choice of three different powertrains, ranging from a 400-volt, 73-kilowatt-hour NMC battery pack with 157 kilowatt motor, a more sporty dual motor version with the same battery pack and 240 kilowatts at the wheels, or a long-legged 98 kilowatt hour battery pack that offers up to 435 miles, 700 kilometers of range on the WLTP test cycle from its front-mounted 170 kilowatt motor. Pricing will be released shortly and order books open soon. For as long as the Porsche Taycan has been in production, there's been a bit of healthy competition betwixt it and the Tesla Model S, most noticeably in trading lap times on the Nürburgring Nordschleife in Germany. And while there's a new king of the ring in the EV world, the Rimac Nivera, it looks like Porsche is readying its latest attack on the Tesla Model S Plaid, an all-new Porsche Taycan GT with more than 1,000 horsepower around 735 kilowatts at the wheels. While we sadly don't have permission to share the spy shot photos that are available, 
we can't afford to drop the many thousands it costs to buy them, this triple motor Taycan is bound to both be incredibly expensive, but also blisteringly quick. And frankly, if it drives as well as the rest of the Porsche Taycan lineup, a lot of fun too. It has been a very long time coming, but new sales data shows that for the first time in history, there were more than 100,000 new EVs registered in the US during July. The milestone not only shows the growth in EV sales, but the breadth of new cars now being offered, with 109,000 or more cars registered in July. While Tesla is still very much at the top of the charts when it comes to overall battery electric sales and has experienced more than 50% growth year on year to date, other models are starting to get some serious sales volumes compared to previous years. For example, the Bolt EV and Bolt EUV look to be on track to hit 80,000 examples this year, while Ford, Volkswagen, Hyundai, BMW and Mercedes-Benz are all experiencing rapid growth. And more EV choice in the marketplace? That's awesome. Hot on the heels of its official reveal of the Mini Countryman EV and next generation Mini Cooper Electric at the start of the month, BMW has confirmed the Mini's ancestral home will, after all, get to play a part in Mini's all-electric future. Initially, concerns about post-Brexit tariffs and a high inflation rate in the UK meant that it was far from a foregone conclusion that BMW would put funds into Mini's Oxford facility to ready it to make EVs. But this week, after months of negotiations, it confirmed that £600 million sterling would be spent readying the facility for EV production. According to BMW, BMW's official press release, the plant, which just turned 110, will produce the all-electric Mini Cooper three-door and a Mini Aceman from 2026 onwards. One of the killer features of modern electric vehicles isn't their range per charge or even their ability to fast charge. It's their ability to work as a backup power solution when the grid goes down. In the last few years, we've seen plenty of vehicles come to market offering vehicle-to-load capabilities like the entire eGMP family of EVs from Hyundai, Kia and Genesis. But to date, only Chademo cars and the Ford F-150 Lightning pickup truck have offered true vehicle-to-home capabilities. Last month, we told you that the Kia EV9 would become the second CCS-compatible EV to bring V to H to the table, and thanks to a partnership with Warbox, this week we saw a demo of that technology in operation for the first time. What's more, Warbox's Quasar 2 offers intelligent transfer to the grid, which could earn you some significant money too. It's probably fairly well known that in order to understand the competition, automakers will pay big bucks to people like Sandy Munro to have competitors' cars torn down to figure out just how they were made. Wall Street analysts also do the same thing in order to truly understand who has the best product in the marketplace. And this week, UBS announced the results of its latest paid-for teardown of a BYD SEAL EV has given it reason to believe that BYD is snapping at Tesla's heels. Comparing power, performance, cost, efficiency and energy density, not to mention estimated build costs, UBS's teardown of the SEAL EV suggests that Tesla needs to up its game to stay ahead. BYD's sell-to-pack and careful use of materials were praised by the bank. While US inflation is far lower than it was 12 months ago and the job market is still enjoying low unemployment rates, auto worker unions haven't been happy of late. While the big three automakers in the US have increased their CEO salaries over the last four years by an average of 40%, UAW says that the average salary of its members rose by just 6% in the same period. General Motors CEO Mary Barra, for example, makes 362 times more per year than the median shop worker at the same company.
And after months of pay negotiations that went right up to the wire, the UAW has decided to strike after failing to come to a satisfactory agreement. It says its pay demands will cost automakers between four and six billion US dollars over the next four years, a fraction of the tens of billions each made in the last year alone. The UAW represents more than 150,000 people in the US who work at Ford, General Motors and Stellantis plants. And while I know not everyone watching this is a fan of labour unions, it shows very clearly how important it is for workers to have a voice when company CEO pay packets just keep getting fatter and fatter. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question for you. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you live in Aptara, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that is perfect for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you should use, and of course, how to get charging at home and clean energy too. So follow the link below and start that journey today. While I love covering the latest new electric vehicles to come to market, one of my favourite parts of this job is meeting all of the incredible people who make EVs happen, especially those who are studying to become the next generation of auto industry experts. But this week, we've got some other university students to celebrate. Two different teams, in fact. That's because we heard this week that students from the Technical University of Munich set a new world record for the longest range EV ever, 2,500 kilometres. That's nearly 1,600 miles, using just a 15.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. We also got to celebrate the new speed record set by ETH Zurich, whose hand-built race car did the 0 to 100 km per hour sprint in 0.956 seconds. It is so wonderful to see all of these cool, engaged young people innovating, and I cannot wait to see more from absolutely all of them. And finally... As anyone who's travelled long distances in an EV will tell you, the public charging network isn't all that great right now, especially if you're not a Tesla driver. And it was with that background that the US Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, and her staff set out on a four-day EV road trip this summer, ostensibly to promote EVs. Knowing that there would be press at every place they stopped, and that one of the Electrify America charging sites on her route had some reliability concerns, someone from Secretary Granholm Home's team decided to drive ahead and nab one of those parking spaces for her to use. They parked an ice car in front of the charging station and caused an angry EV owner to call the police. Given that Secretary Granholm actually does daily drive an EV, a Chevrolet Bolt EV no less, this looks really quite bad. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it is time to switch to Altera's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch. And when you do, you'll help wean the nation off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge right here on this channel. He's been playing with a bright big blue electric digger and he even got a moustache to play the part. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.